have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That hey guys, Circles here and I am back with another video. So in this video, uh, Clement and Godwin and I, of course, we discuss um, the importance of interpretation when it comes to the Bible. Um, we talk about this because interpretation, it, in my view, is very significant, very important interpretation of the Bible, of sacred texts, of any sacred text, be it the Bible, the Quran, or anything, have led to great, immense developments in the world. But it has also led to the manifestation of atrocities throughout the world, um, be it the actions of the political regime in Rome, when after they embraced Christianity and used it to justify a lot of atrocities, or the actions of benevolent um, patrons of Christ, such as a mother, mother, a mother Theresa or Martin Luther King, who used the word of God to liberate his people as best as he possibly could by applying peace. So, interpretation is very important. You know, so we talk about the importance of interpretation in our view. So that is what you can expect from this video. Uh, a lot of opinions that we shared were diverse. I think there was a, a fun mesh of different components that met up this video and yeah we talk about a lot of things i think it's a very enjoyable i hope it's a very enjoyable video for all of you to watch and yes i hope you enjoy the video nonetheless please if you like the video after you watch it like if you have any opinions let us know in the comment section and if you have not subscribed to my channel you know what to do subscribe <laughs> but anyways enjoy the video and i shall see you soon hey, oh. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah that's just it's Niger brain. That's what I want from I can't even see it. Go really? Blind. Oh yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Hey guys, it's Terry Costa and I am back with another video. So welcome to episode two of the biblical series. I am still joined by Clement, the fine man. That's right, by God, and another fine man. I mean, to, 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 in this video, sorry, we're going to be talking about the importance of interpretation when it comes to to the Bible. So the Bible, of course, is one of the most significant uh, sacred texts in the world. Mm. That's why I'm making this series, because it controls the minds of so many people. I know when people say control the mind, they see it as something that's negative, but it controls the mind in many positive ways. So it's good for people to have a thorough understanding of the Bible, or else to allow someone who claims to know the Bible mm. to control their mind for them, because I think a lot of that is going on. But we're going to talk about that later when we talk about false prophets and corrupted pastors and whatnot. But here we're going to talk about interpretations. How important, Godwin, do you feel interpretations are when it comes to reading the Bible, practicing the deeds that are spread in the Bible and whatnot? I think it's very important because you, you need to understand the Bible, you know, very well in in order to, like, act, act um, upon it or, like, do whatever it says. Because, like, if you actually don't understand the Bible, like, you know, mentally... Or uh, even physically, um, I I think you'd be you'd be heading in the wrong way. So, um, knowing understanding the Bible and having a good interpretation of it is very very important. Mm -hmm. What about you? Do you think interpretations are important? Yeah, uh, so you can like uh, meditate on the words yeah. that you read in the Bible, so you can have a, a better understanding of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a, it, the Bible is a very deep um, text, so having a good understanding about it is very important interesting and I, I think you know the bible is very important but i nearly distinguished bible and interpretation because many people interpret it in different ways mm. an example of how somebody can interpret it in a bad way in an egregious mm. way is how slave masters european slave masters that went to africa to enslave many africans they cited verses and passages in the bible mm. to justify what they did and when they enslaved the africans they gave Africans certain texts in the Bible they took out parts like Exodus because mm. what happened in Exodus yeah the uh, Israelites were uh, slaves to the Egyptians and they were freed out of slavery by Moses mm. but they showed them certain passages in the Bible to keep them enslaved because God also gave Moses laws for slaves and they'd show that to the slave uh, the European slave master would to the African slave and say okay you have to obey me because the God that created you said you have to obey me mm. so that's a certain malicious interpretation of the Bible and that uh, has affected people in detrimental ways. However, I could interpret the Bible in a positive way. I could take Jesus' works and words and allow that to push me out to go out there and go, do good things in society. Hmm. So the Bible is powerful 
But we as human beings have shown that interpretation is very powerful also. Another good example, lads, is uh, America and Africa. The two most relig religious regions in the world are America, uh, the country, and Africa, the continent. However, in Africa, there's so much pov poverty, rampant poverty, mm -hmm. whereas in America, there's wealth. It's arguably the richest country in the world. So I would say the African in Africa, who is poverty stricken, would interpret the Bible in a way that would have them sit down, you know, and this is because of the poverty, this is because of the way they feel, of course, mm. it's because of the environment, not necessarily because of their personality. Have them sit down and say, okay, it's poverty, we're yeah. struggling, we're suffering, but Jesus is going to come one day, <laughs> and things are going to get better, and I'm going to wait till then, and I'm going to suffer on earth, but I'm mm. going to enjoy uh, prosperity after I die. Mm. That's the mindset, and it's a mindset not only because of religion, but because of the political climate and corruption and whatnot. But in America, like, Yep, you be down. We're gonna go out and get, <laughs> we're gonna go out and get this bread today, and I'm gonna to pray to God Jesus Christ while I do it. You know, so the interpretation is different. Very different. Yeah. <laughs> Same can. Bible, different interpretation. So from what I said, what do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? Andy? Um, I re I do agree because um, like if if you look if you look at Africa right now, even on the media, the only part they they show in Africa is you know the poor the poor mm. part you know and you know poor people if they were to you know take the bible and read because of the situation mm. they're in are they going to be like you know what let's just look on god whenever you know if god decides to you know make us you know wealthy or whatever we take it up and if we are to um stay as poor as we are we also take it because they have no choice they have no mm. option like and um, as we are here, we don't know what they're going through. But like, if you go to America, what doesn't America have? America has everything. Like you, uh, someone might go to, might go to his, uh, his or her work, right? And then just be like, God, I'm going to work today. You know, um, help me through my work, help me get money, right? But in Africa, there isn't as much jobs yeah. as um, yeah. America will have. So all they have to do is just, you know, just wait on God, mm. I guess. So, yeah, and it makes it makes so much di uh, difference and it makes um, understanding, in some way, understanding the Bible um, or even the interpretation of the Bible a little bit different for the poor people and the rich people mm. because the poor people have to read and understand that it will all be well you know god will provide for them but like those who are rich or let's say those who are in america they read it as oh you know god will bless my work for me and i'll get money mm. so yeah i think it, it's very important how um people various people understand Mm. Uh, interpretation of the Bible. 100%. And what about you? How do you? What do you think about what you said thus far? Um, just what I think. Um, Let like, him know. Uh, as in like, uh, do you know we like um, us Christians in Africa have faith? Yeah. We don't um, work. Yeah. So like we, do, we believe, but we just expect them to happen straight away. Yeah. 100%. And without doing anything, so I won't like do anything. But in the American way, they work. And they will go outside and do their things, and God will bless them more because mm. they are trying. Yeah. Compared mm. to the Africa, Africa don't really do that. So we need to change that mindset in Africa. Preach, brother. <laughs> in Africa and in America, and try and be like the Americans we and do it properly. One hundred percent. I think everything you're saying is so accurate. Mm. My mom actually once told me that. Um, she said, "Eric, <laughs> okay. do you know the difference between uh, an African and when she says African and." We were talking about poverty in Africa. I don't want to simply say that there's poverty in Africa the way that the charity organization advertisements tell us that there's poverty mm. in Africa, as if we're just innately impoverished people. No, we need to learn about the backstory of the poverty in Africa true, and how true. the Western influence caused that poverty in Africa. And how they Africa do, was. They don't show it in the media as well. They don't teach us in the history yeah. books either. Mm. So, 100%. So, I need to just get that in there because I don't want to bash and berate Africa because, in terms of minerals, re resources, and riches and whatnot, it's the richest and most wealthiest continent in the world. Africa has everything but guys. <laughs> Africa has everything. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, back to my mom. <laughs> she said, Eric, the thing about the African people, she said, they will pray to God and ask him to win the lotto. 
and they don't go to the shop to buy the ticket. <laughs> <buy the> tickets. <laughs> How can you pray? Come on, come on, sense. <laughs> so I say, okay, mom, you're right. Okay, but you don't have to speak to me like that. And <laughs> you know, yeah. But uh, yeah, and I, I think that encapsulates the attitude, the general attitude. So I think as people are taught the Bible, mm. we shouldn't simply teach to know. We should teach to understand, to understand because yes. there are different ways to know and there are different ways to understand and different ways to interpret. So we need to teach that to people. Um, one thing I've actually noticed too is I spoke to friends of mine in secondary school actually a while ago who are atheists and I asked them a question. I said, are you an atheist because of God or because of the way people act in the name of God? Mm. And there were three atheists beside me and they all said because of the way people act in the name of God. Mm. And that struck me straight away. Maybe it's not God that's putting them off. Maybe it's not the story that they don't believe. Mm. Maybe it's the, the actions of people who the interpret people the change. word of God in the wrong way. Mm. Um, so what do you think of that? Do you think we as people need to prioritize interpretation and ensuring that even if we interpret the, the Bible in a way that is slightly off, mm. it's still based upon positivity, righteousness and goodness and all that is right? Mm. Yeah. Um, we need to show them love. Mm. Because in this world we need love, mm. not we should not show hate. Because mm. just because they hate us doesn't mean that they have to hate them. Yeah. By loving mm. them and showing them and giving them an insight on the Bible mm. and giving them a, a good passage in the Bible mm. and showing them like this is the way and the truth. Mm. So that's why I think I think it's love. One hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. Um. Mm. I I agree with what Clement said. We we just um. Mm. We just have to like you know love them as you said we also have to like associate with them you know if if you want someone to um know what you are about obviously you have to like you know connect with them be friends with them to let them know who you are mm -hmm. so if we want people to know uh, if we want people to know who god is and to understand um what god does or who god really is and we have to, um, you know, our character and everything has to be on point. It has to be godlike, and yeah, we can also like do things that, um, you know, will portray God in us. Yeah. And so when they look at us, they won't be like, uh, oh, look at what, look at what he's doing. Yeah. That's why I don't believe in God. You yeah. know, we have to do things that will make it, will make us, you know, special. And so that when they see us, they're like, okay, and I see what he's doing. Like, you know, you can see God through this person. And one thing human beings, we also um, are in the wrong, uh, we are in the wrong is using God's name in vain. Mm -hmm. We use God's name, like, anyhow, even, even in, what do you call it, pornographic movies or clips or whatever <laughs> we use that's not what we're meant to do we, we, we people 100%. use god's uh, god's name you know in vain if you read exodus chapter 20 verse um i think verse four yeah verse four yeah. god god um god in the command it's part of the commandment the third commandment says do not use god's name in vain do not say god's name by heart, you know. Sometimes you might say, "Oh my God," you know. Yeah. For hey, no reason. Hey, don't use the I word. mean, God forgive me. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, like we we do that for no reason, and that you know doesn't portray a good character or like a godlike character in us. So all of this, we need to learn how to get rid of them. Mm. And I think you reference uh, Exodus verse twenty twenty. Yeah, twenty. Chapter twenty. Chapter yeah, twenty. Verse four. Yeah. Verse four was it? Yeah, I think it was verse 4. Yeah. And you referenced that. And you, in referencing that, mm. took it, you interpreted it to interpreted it in a godlike way, mm. and then used that to say that. Mm. So we need to ensure that we're interpreting the word of, the God, word of God in a way that pushes us to say things that, like yeah. what you've just said. That we need to love and we need to cherish, we need to bring in, we need to uplift, and we need to nurture people mm. rather than pretentiously and cock. judge them. Yeah. And be and stereotypical it. about them. That's it. Exactly. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the last thing I want to say is that. Uh, is I, I want to talk about how interpretations sometimes can vary mm -hmm. and how inter people like willfully, consciously interpret the Bible in a way that suits them. So for instance, a corrupt pastor, let's say for an example, and we're going to go into corrupt pastors in, in, in the next video, I think, yeah. in the one after this. Um, 
a corrupt pastor might look at the Bible. A corrupt pastor that might be taking advantage of mm. the congregation financially or economically might look at the Bible and say, look at a passage in the Bible that suits him. A passage in the Bible that would encourage the members of the church to continue to do things that suit him. Mm. And he might read it and read it and read it and completely ignore a passage that talks about false prophets and what's going yeah, to happen to them. Definitely. Because he knows if anyone in the congregation is uh, in the know about what he's doing, they'll go straight to that passage and say, Hey, hey. you know what I do? Mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nothing in it. <laughs> so interpretations are very important, and I think that example portrays it. Another example that's very interesting, very controversial, the topic of homosexuality in the Bible. So in the book of Leviticus, um, God said to Moses that if a man sleeps with a man as he would a, a woman, mm -hmm. it's an abomination. And many, me myself, when it comes to my views on homosexuality, of course, I'm very liberal, of mm -hmm. course. It's something that I wouldn't even think about it. I would never say it's wrong, no matter what. And I'm someone who's a child of God. Mm -hmm. If anyone tried to say it's wrong to me, I wouldn't get angry, but I tried to educate them in a way that would mm -hmm. have them understand that humans are humans, and regardless of who you love, it doesn't matter. But in the book of Leviticus, the same book of Leviticus, God says that there are clean animals and there are unclean animals. Mm -hmm. A clean animal is... Um, he listed them off. One yeah. that chews the cud and parts the hoof. Yeah. And an unclean animal, he listed them off. And an example of an unclean animal, God said, is the pig. That's an unclean animal. Oh, yes. You should never <laughs> eat it. So I'd speak to some Christians, some religious friends, and say, Eric, I know your views, but I just, I can't be for that homosexuality. Because mm. in Leviticus, it says this. Every day, every evening for dinner, they eat pork. <laughs> they eat pork. Nom 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 nom. No, no. I, I, Eric, I just can't. Nom nom nom. They go, they, they go get sandwich. Can I have ham? <laughs> <laughs> I would decide them. Or pizza. Can I have ham on my, uh, as a topping, please? You, you, like, must, you know, and this is what I mean by interpretation. So, how we severely, people can be severely scriptural. They mm. can interpret it to the detriment of someone else or even to themselves. And I think this really is off putting for so many people. This is why people feel that God cannot embrace them and take them in. Because people that interpret the, the Bible wrongly, make people feel like it's not for them. Mm. Even the slave master example, mm. it took me such a long time to even think about embracing Christianity because my ancestors were oppressed by people who misinterpreted the Bible. I thought it was Christianity doing that, but now I understand it wasn't. It was their interpretation. Mm. The people and their inter interpretation that did that. So what do you guys think of what I've just said there? Uh, um, the, wait, what was I going to say? Take your time, because I know I ramble. <laughs> <laughs> no way. You said something about the pig. Yeah. The mixes homosexualities. And yeah. It triggered me. Some triggered me. Same book. The exact same book, Leviticus. Mm. Mention two of them. People want to nitpick and go for one because mm. it may suit their own social views. But when it comes to the other, they want to completely neglect it. And that's all down to their interpretation. They're interpreting it in a hypocritical way just to suit themselves. So what do you think about that? Right, wrong, but wrong obviously. But <laughs> I think you covered everything. Okay, you covered everything. I don't know. I have not seen. Covered I mean, um, when it comes to homosexuality, uh, um, well, to me, it's wrong. Even as you said, um, Leviticus uh, speaks about it. Like God gave commandment to um, Moses, saying uh, it's an abomination. And even if you look in in Genesis. Uh, in the later part of Genesis, when um, in Sodom and Gomorrah, um, God destroyed God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of what they were doing. Because there was homosexuality. It's not these gen this generation that we only see it. It was it was always, it was in the it's in the Bible. It's been there for a long, long time, and God destroyed the sea of Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexuality and other sins that they obviously did even um when you read when you read the story of noah and um, when god told um mm -hmm. when god told noah to go tell the people of the world that he's going to destroy the earth yeah the reason why god was going to destroy the earth was because of their sins and this uh, god was saying they were given in to marriages okay. not marriages as um, male and female it was marriages of um, male and male female you know homosexuality right, right. But we're so, not only discussing interpretations here, I like this video because we're actually sharing our interpretations. Mm -hmm. So Governor and I interpret it differently, which is okay. It's a healthy disagreement. This is what needs to happen. When people are discussing the Bible, you need to be able to say, I don't believe this, I believe that. Mm -hmm. How are we going to come together and come to a position of understanding? Mm -hmm. I completely understand everything Godwin has said on a religious level. However, right, I study law, for example. Yeah. <laughs> and if Clement went to court because he was misbehaving and there was a misdemeanor, even though that would never happen. Look at him. You know, he just <laughs> um, and he went to court and he got in trouble. The court could 
give a decision to say mm-hmm. if anyone, let's say you got in trouble for throwing this on the wall, mm-hmm. and the court could make a decision to say if anyone throws the dad at the wall again, they're going to get 10 years in jail, mm-hmm. starting with Clement. So they'd throw you in jail for 10 years for throwing that at the wall, mm-hmm. right? So that's precedent. They set down a standard. Mm-hmm. So if I went out and I did the exact same thing and I went to court, they would follow the precedent, mm-hmm. 10 years for me. God and went, 10 years for them. But a court has the power to say, okay, anymore, if anyone throws that at the wall, we're going to give them three years. So after your case, they could give me three years. Mm -hmm. That's a new precedent because Mm -hmm. that's something different. So if he goes to court, instead of getting 10 years, because they set down a new precedent, he gets three years. Now, the the courts of the Bible, the biblical Mm -hmm. courts, said all it is that you've just said about homosexuality. But when Jesus came out, he came out as a high court. Mm -hmm. He said, love your neighbor. So I believe a lot of the things that are said in the Old Testament, Jesus just (laughs) overruled it. Mm. And many people say this about many, many different things in the Bible. They say when Jesus came, Mm. things changed. But Mm. I think you, because of your devoutness, because of how spiritual and religious you are, you want to abide with the Bible. Mm. Other people, because of their malicious views, just want to pick something that will give them Mm. a reason to reprimand people who are of a sexuality that Mm. they're not of, if you know what I mean. I mean, I'm not saying I don't like, you know, no, yeah, hate that, yeah. just people religious, who are homosexual. This is religious, this is religious. Not, not yet. Yeah. Like, if, if I had a friend who was uh, gay or whatever, I, I'm, I'm not going to say I don't want to be friends with you just because you're gay. Mm. Nah, that's not it. It's no. just what He's I believe like in. Yeah, I'm not Lovely like just, it. It's just what I believe in. But, you're just um, Canadian, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. Forevermore. As Eric was saying, we just need to um, what you say? love your neighbor. Yeah, we just need to uh, love our neighbors, as you know, yourself. as ourselves, because even the Bible said it. And we need to, you know, respect everyone's um, decision or whatever they want to do, yeah. because at the end of the day, when Jesus comes, it's a it's a personal relation, your personal relationship Jesus with God. Jesus, not you know as a as a group or whatever yeah. so if god comes it's between me and him if yeah. god comes it's between you and him mm-hmm. so yeah whatever you do that's on you to be honest that's so, it. That's yeah powerful. spoken like a true disciple <laughs> <laughs> but anyway this is the second video in the series we spoke about interpretation we shared some of our interpretations and we will see you at the next video of the series see you see you there all right see you